Hi, this is Jackie Hems. I'm in Myrtle Station, Antarctica, and I'd like to take you on a tour of their desalination plant that uses reverse osmosis to supply water to the entire town of McMurdo. Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Paul Jones. Uh, I am a water plant operator. I am a water plant operator for McMurdo Station, Antarctica. Uh, we are in the back of the water plant right now, and this pipe right along here is our seawater intake pipe. The seawater comes in and goes up into this big tank that you are seeing right here. This is our salt water tank, and the seawater comes in at approximately 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it doesn't take, uh, most people realize, if you take the salt out of water at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to freeze. So in this pipe, this tank right here, we warm the water up to approximately 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So we warm it with fuel that are from our big diesel engines that are right next to us, right across the hall, as a matter of fact. You can probably hear them running right now. Okay, water comes out of the seawater tank through this pipe, goes into each of these big filters. And these filters are full of sand. This just is like a swimming pool filter and it takes all of the big chunks out of the water. There aren't very many. We back flush these every now and then to remove all the big chunks. This is a reverse osmosis machine. It has four approximately 10 yards long, 30 feet I believe they are, 35 feet, eight inch pipes that are packed full of membranes. You will get a picture of the membranes later. So the water comes in. Each one of these tubes will produce 10,000 gallons of fresh water in a 24-hour day. So this unit will produce 40,000 gallons of good RO water. And it goes into this device right here, which is a filter. The filter is, filters look like this. These will take the little tiny chunks out of the water. Five microns, and that's a very small size. This is an old dirty one here, obviously. But these fit in here, that's the next step that we do. that is inside these tanks right here. And these are the RO membranes. These are the RO membranes that fit inside this filter. They are very, very tightly woven, compact membranes. They have holes in them that are small enough that will let water through and stop the salt. Now obviously these are old dry ones, they're not good ones, but that's what they look like inside those white tubes. There are six of these in one of the long tubes. We change them every now and then if they happen to break or wear out. Now with holes so small, it requires a lot of pressure to push the water through the, and keep the salt out. We jack the pressure up to over 800 pounds a square inch. And this is what this pump does. This is a high pressure pump. I mean really high pressure, 800 pounds. Notice the piping here is all stainless steel, certified welded joints. You do not want these things to blow apart. 800 pounds is a lot of pressure.
water goes through, it has almost everything taken out of it. It is nearly distilled water. And of course, people do not like to drink distilled water. So we have these big green tanks right here that are full of calcium carbonate. Uh, I'm from Iowa, so this is commonly what we call limestone. And we add a little bit of carbon dioxide to the water to bring down the pH so that it becomes slightly acid. And then it hits the limestone and picks up the calcium out of it to make the water taste. And it also makes sure that the acid does not eat up the pipes inside the town. We do not want that to happen. Each one of these tanks that you see will hold 50,000 gallons of water. We have four of them. They have a sight tube going up. Unfortunately, the sight tube, you can barely see it right now, at 13.3 inches. That's got 13.3 inches of water in it. That one right there is what we are using at the moment. The water that's going to town right now, this minute, is coming out of tank number two. Tank number one over here is the one I am filling at the moment, right now. And then we have tank three and tank four that are full. So we have a total capacity of 200,000 gallons. We try to keep two full, one going up and one coming down is our plan. Chemicals that we add to the water, this is purified water now. Obviously one is going to be chlorine. We have a chlorine pump that pumps a chlorine mixture into the water. We try to keep the chlorine at about 0.5 parts per million. It takes very little chlorine because if you think about it, the Antarctic Ocean out here is not sterile, but it's practically sterile. We buy chlorine by the 100 pound barrel. In Iowa, I live in a small town, we buy chlorine by the ton to run our water plant. This device here is a post treatment. We add it strictly to bring the pH up so that our pH of our water stays roughly 8.8, 8.9 is what we like. That is slightly basic so that we do not have any acid to make sure that it doesn't eat the pipes up. This building, this whole plant, the whole town was built in the 1950s. All copper, no PVC, all iron pipes. And so the pipes are fragile. We do not want acid water to eat up those pipes. Okay, I'm gonna test this uh, desalination plant and see how delicious the water is. Very good and very cold. Paul, what makes um, the water here off of McMurdo Sound more suitable for desalination? Because all of the textbooks say that it's cost prohibitive for this kind of an operation and that there is a large cost for brine disposal. Okay, the reason why we can do it so easily here is the fact that the water out here in our ocean is not sterile but practically so. It is covered by 10 feet of ice and the water is crystal clear. Divers can swim out underneath the ice and you can see under roughly 100 to 150 feet. In my Iowa lake where I live we can't see three feet when you dive underneath it with all kinds of algae and whatever else that is growing. Here we don't have that whatever else and the water is so good to start with.